Hello everyone. Welcome to First Online University, a global platform for all your education and growth related needs. In this lecture, we are going to continue with the chapter coordination compounds and we will be talking about the classification of ligands. So till the last lecture, we had discussed the very basics of coordination chemistry. In this lecture, we will be discussing in detail about ligands okay then we will move on to discussing the coordination compounds on the whole but in this lecture our focus will only be on ligands before we begin a piece of information for you you can use the coupon codes mission j or mission need while you enroll at first online university for mission j or need let us start with the coordination sorry the classification of ligands and we'll be doing it in parts so let us see what part one has in store for us now ligands i'll not go by uh, you know the scientific definitions of it first let us understand what is a ligand i hope you've seen the first lecture and then only you've moved on to the second lecture so if you've seen the first lecture you will be well aware of what is a ligand by now still i'll just repeat it through an example so if we talk about this complex that is fecn6 cl3 here the ligand remember is always present inside the coordination sphere that is the square brackets so within the square brackets whatever is going to be present apart from the metal ion or metal atom is going to be the ligand so here my cn minus is the ligand similarly in case of this nickel a uh, carbonyl complex we have co that is carbonyl which is a neutral ligand so here cn minus is the ligand here co is the ligand so a molecule or ion which is coordinated to the metal atom or metal ion in a coordination compound is called a ligand simple so ligands are basically electron pair donors we have seen that in the last lecture that ligands they possess a lone pair of electrons which they donate to the metal ions which are electron deficient species that is they act as lewis acids and there is a coordinate bond that is formed between the ligand and the metal ion now ligands can be classified into charged ligands or neutral ligands and within charged also we will have positive and negatively charged ligands let us first talk about the positive ligands now what is meant by positive ligands all those ligands that will have a positive charge on them are positive ligands now a question might come into your mind that if it is positive okay that means it is having lack of electrons how is it able to donate an electron pair to form a coordinate bond if this question really comes into your mind that means you've understood till now and this question is very common to pop up in your mind the answer to this question is that the lone pair of electron is not contributing to the presence of any negative charge on the ligand or any species in general the lone pair is just two electrons present in an orbital that's it it is not giving a negative charge to that species and whether that species is neutral or positive or negative that has nothing to do with the lone pair that is going to form the coordinate bond so let us look at some of the examples of positive ligands we will be uh, i'll be giving you the name of the ligand the formula and the name which is given in the complex so it's not necessary that whatever name in general that particular a uh, species has it will have the same name in the uh, coordination complex also that is very rare so let us first talk about hydrogenium ion it has the formula nh2 nh3 plus and in the complex it is known as hydrogenium only second is nitrosonium ion which is no plus and in the complex it is given the name nitrosonium only then there is nitronium which is no2 plus and in the complex it is known as nitronium only okay so do remember the formula that is very very important because if a complex coordination compound is given to you and you are asked to name it 
if you do not know the name of the ligand or if you're confused with it because you do not know what NO2 plus is called and you confuse it with NO plus, you'll not be able to tell the IUPAC name of that coordination compound. Next, we talk about negative ligands. Now, let us again look at the name, the formula and the name that is given in the complex. So, the first that we are going to talk about is cyanide ion which has the formula CN minus C. Remember, this, these two lone pairs shown or not will not make a difference because they are assumed to be having, all of the ligands are assumed to be already having this lone pair, whether we show it or not, because this is what they donate to the metal ion. So this formula CN minus is given the name Psi no in the complex. Second is halide ion could be F minus, Cl minus, Br minus or I minus called as fluoro, chloro, bromo and iodo. Then hydride ion that is H minus is known as hydrido inside the complex. Then nitro, NO2 minus is given as nitro only. Then nitrite ion, ONO minus. Remember there is NO2 plus also, NO2 minus also. Okay. Now, when NO2 is given in the complex inside the coordination sphere, it will not be mentioned whether it is NO plus or NO minus, NO2 plus or NO2 minus. You will have to identify it, and that will come through a lot of practice. Okay, because you will be able to find out what is the overall charge on the complex species, what is the oxidation state of the metal. Then subtracting the two, what is the total number of electrons that are left to be given to, uh, what is the total charge that is left to be given to the ligands and then you will be able to find out whether excess of positive charge is left or excess of negative charge is left for NO2. And accordingly, if there is a negative charge left, it is going to be nitro, otherwise it is going to be the positively charged NO2+. plus. Next is nitrite ion. Now in the nitrite ion, we have O N O minus and in the compound it is going to be given the name nitrito. Then we have the nitrate ion. We know silver nitrate. So what is the nitrate ion? N O three minus. In the and the name that would be given the complex would be nitrito. Then we have hydroxide ion O H minus, which is given the name of hydroxo in the coordination compound or the complex. And then we have amino, that is NH2 minus, which is given the name in the complex as amido. Then we have sulfide ion S2 minus, which is called sulfido. Sulfite ion SO3 2 minus, called sulfito. Sulfate SO4 2 minus, that is called sulfato. Then thiosulfate, that is S2O3 2 minus. Thiosulfato, then carbonate that is CO3 2 minus carbonato, imide that is NH2, NH2 minus that is imido. Okay, so this is again, I'm telling you again and again, it is very important that you know the formula and the name that is given in the complex. Next is neutral ligand. Neutral ligand can be ammonia. That is NH3, which is given the name as amine in the complex. Then we can have water, H2O, which is given the name as aqua or aquo. Then nitric oxide, NO, is given as nitrosyl. Carbon monoxide, CO, as carbonyl. Thiocarbonyl, that is CS, as thiocarbonyl only. Phosphine, PH3, as phosphine only. Then triphenylphosphine as triphenylphosphine only, where you have three phenyl rings attached to phosphorus atom. Then thiourea, that is instead of O, you will have S. So NH2, CS, NH2. That is again given the name in the complex as thiourea only. Then pyridine, which is C5H5N, where N will have the lone pair that is going to act as the donor atom. It is given the name pyridine only inside the complex. Based on what we have learned, let us do a few MCQ questions. A ligand in the complex, this is Fe, C 
CN, NO, both B and C. So obviously answer is option number D because both CN and NO are the ligands here. Next question is, again the ligands are Lewis acid, electron acceptors. See Lewis acid means electron acceptor only. Electron pair donor or Lewis base. So both options C and D are the right answers. Now let us talk about neutral ligands in greater details. We have seen that neutral ligands ammonia NH3 is given amine, water is given aqua or aqua, nitric oxide is NO that is nitrosyl, carbon monoxide is CO that is carbonyl, then thiocarbonyl is CS that is thiocarbonyl, phosphine is PH3 that is phosphine, triphenylphosphine is triphenylphosphine, thiourea is thiourea, pyridine is pyridine. Now, if we have COO, COO that is minus and minus, COO minus, COO minus. Now here, there are two oxygen atoms that can have, so we have a lone pair here also, we have a lone pair here also. So both these atoms within the same ligand are capable of forming coordinate bond with the metal ion or metal atom. So such a ligand is called bidentate. What is denticity? Denticity refers to the number of coordinate bonds that can be formed from the same ligand to the metal ion. Bi means 2, tri means 3, tetra means 4, mono means 1, penta means 5, hexa means 6 and so on. Okay. This is known as this ligand is the oxalate ion which is a bidentate ligand because it has two donor atoms which can form coordinate bonds with the metal atom or ion. Next if I talk about this species which is also capable of forming there are again two donor atoms both nitrogen and oxygen can form coordinate bonds with the metal atom again this is going to be a bidentate ligand called as glycinate ion. Now, if I talk about this complex, you can see that there are three nitrogen atoms which contain a lone pair and are capable of forming three coordinate bonds with the metal ion. Therefore, this is a tridentate ligand. And if we look at this particular ligand, it has four oxygen atoms and two nitrogen atoms that are capable of forming coordinate bonds. So, it is going to be four plus two, six. So, denticity is six. That means it is hexadentate ligand. And the very, 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 very important, the most important ligand of our coordination compounds chapter is this, that is EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. And since from acetic acid, that is CH3COOH, H has been removed from all of them, so it becomes acetate. So ethylene diamine tetraacetate. And the above is the example of diethylene triamine. This is one ethylene molecule. This is another ethylene molecule. So two ethylenes means diethylene triamine. One, two, three. Three amino groups, so triamine. So diethylene triamine. Let us solve a few MCQs. Which of the following is a monodentate ligand? Means denticity is equal to one. Amino acid. Now we know what is the structure of amino acid. Amino acid contains NH2 and COH group. If H is removed, that is CO minus and NH2. So it is going to have two donor atoms present in the ligand. So its density will be equal to 2. Ammonia molecule? Yes. Water molecule? Or pyridine? So answers are B, C, D. Because ammonia has one nitrogen donor atom. Water has one oxygen donor atom. Pyridine has again one nitrogen donor atom. So B, C and D are the right answers. Next question is, which of the following is a bidentate ligand? Is or are? More than one option can be correct. Amino acid. Yes, I have just told you in the last slide only. Glycinate ion. We have seen it is a bidentate ligand. Oxalate. We have seen it is a bidentate ligand. Pyridine we know is a monodentate ligand. So options A, B and C are the right answers here. 
So for being able to answer these questions, you're supposed to know these structures or at least the formulae. See, even formulae won't work so much as much as the structures would work, okay? So you are supposed to know these structures of these ligands to be able to answer such questions. Next, we move on to the classification of ligands part two. Now we have discussed about ligands being classified into charged and neutral and that would be positive, charged could be positive or negative. So ligands are basically also classified on the basis of their denticity as we have just seen. The negative ligands can be monodentate or polydentate. Monodentate means denticity is equal to 1. Polydentate means denticity greater than 1. Similarly, neutral ligands can also be classified into monodentate and polydentate. So let us first move talk about negative ligands that to monodentate ligands. These are the examples of monodentate ligands. We have already talked about this table in terms of the name formula and the name that is given in the complex. So I'll not repeat the entire thing. Let us just look at the formula. So here in Cn minus, nitrogen is the donor atom. Here we can see F minus, Cl minus, Vr minus and I minus. All of them have like one single atoms only. H minus. In NO2 minus, again nitrogen is going to be donor. ONO minus, oxygen is the donor. NO3 minus nitrogen, OH minus oxygen, NH2 minus nitrogen. So each of them will have just one more donor atoms available. So density is equal to 1. Next, let's move, let's move on to polydentate negative ligands. Now here we have talked about oxalate ions. Since there are two oxygen donor atoms present within the same ligand, so density is 2. If I talk of acetyl acetonate, so this is acetyl acetonate. This is the structure, okay? Structure is important for you to know. Again, it has two oxygen donor atoms to form two coordinate bonds. Then we have glycinate that we have already seen. Glycine is an amino acid, so obviously NH2 and CO minus. So again, this is also a bidentate ligand. Then if I talk of ethylene, diamine, triacetate. Then triacetate means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, denticity is equal to 5. In the complex, it is given the name ethylene diamine triacetato. Here we have 4 plus 2. So, denticity is 6. In the complex, it is named as ethylene diamine tetraacetato. Now, based on this, the name of OH minus in complexes is your options are oxyhydrogen. Hydroxide ion, hydride ion, or hydroxo. You should know what the correct answer is because we have already seen it in the table. The correct answer is hydroxo, option number D. Question 2 is ethylene diamine. Remember what the structure is ethylene diamine. One ethylene group, two NH2, NH2 attached to each of the two carbon atoms is a monodentate. There are two nitrogen atoms, so it's going to be a bidentate ligand. So option B is the right answer here. Next, we move on to classification of ligands part 3. Now, we have talked about the monodentate and polydentate negative ligands. Now, we will be talking about monodentate and polydentate neutral ligands. So let us first talk about monodentate neutral ligands. If we look at this table, again, I'm not going to repeat. For neutral ligands, I have repeated the table twice because these are very, very important ligands. I will just give you an overview of why it is called monodentate or unidentate ligands. So, ammonia, one nitrogen atom, one donor atom. Oxygen, again nitrogen. Oxygen or carbon, depending upon, we'll see. Then again, CS, one. Phosphine, P. Triphenylphosphine P here again. Uh, now here you can say that you know there are two nitrogen atoms, but these nitrogen atoms are not involved in donation. It can act as monodentate. And when we talk about polydentate ligands, the examples look like something like this. So ethylene diamine, which is given the short form as En. Okay. So when you are writing the name of the structure, you can also use En. Then. Uh, so, uh, sorry, not the name when you're writing the structure. 
Then we have two two dipyridyl, which is given by dipy. Dipyridyl is the name that you give. And again, since there are two nitrogen atoms, so it's going to be pyrantate. Here it's going to be pyrantate orthophenanthroline, which is given by pH. And in the complex, it is named as phenanthroline only. Then we have examples of tridentate where we have seen that uh, diethylene, diethylene, triamine, that is given as dien, and the name is diethylene triamine only, is a tridentate ligand. Then we have tetradentate. The example includes triethylene tetramine. So, two, uh, triethylene means three ethylenes, one, two, three, and tetramine means one, two, three four amino groups so here the uh, the density is going to be equal to four one two three and four so triethylene tetra means the name that is given in the complex let us have a look at the mcqs which of the following is a tridentate ligand your options are ammonia no we know it's monodentate tri n tri n means triethylene Tetramine, dipy, and diet. So the correct option is option number D. See, triethylene tetramine is a tetradentate ligand. Dipy, we have seen dipyridine is a bidentate ligand. Dien, that is diethylene triamine. Triamine means three nitrogen atoms, so it is going to be a tridentate ligand. Again, I'm telling you, you should be knowing since we have already introduced all this concept in the table. So I expect you to be knowing the names, their short forms and their structures by now. Unless and until you do not know these structures, you will not be able to answer such questions. Now, let us move on to another important category of ligands that is ambidentate or chelated, uh, sorry, ambidentate ligands and chelated ligands. Now, as is clear from the name, ambidentate means it can show more than one type of denticity. For example, if I talk of NO2 minus. Now, here, NO2 minus can show coordination from nitrogen towards the metal and then it will act as a monodentate ligand, which is known as nitrito N. So, it is given as the name nitrito N when we are writing down the IUPAC name of a given complex where N denotes the, that nitrogen is the donor atom. Or, now see, more than one type of, uh, so ambidentate is basically representing here that there can be more than one type of donor atoms that is present inside the coordination compound. So, here if oxygen acts as the donor atom, then we will write it as nitrito O. That is, oxygen is the donor atom. So, a ligand which contains two donor atoms, but it's not going to be bidentate because at a time only one of them is going to form a coordinate bond with the central metal atom or ion. So, do not get confused between ambidentate and bidentate ligands because both of them have two donor atoms, but for bidentate, both the donor atoms are going to simultaneously form bond with the metal, but in case of ambidentate there is just going to be one donor atom at a time that will coordinate to the metal atom or ion. For example, you can see uh, nitrito N and nitrito O have been shown here. Right? So, here we have the example. Similar example could be thiocyanate that is thiocyanato where S is the donor or we have isothiocyanato, isothiocyanato where N is going to be the donor atom. CN where we have cyano where C is the donor atom or NC, isocyano where N is the donor atom. Now next thing we need to talk about very very important towards the end of this lecture is chelation. Now when we say chelation what do you mean? Or what do we mean? Chelation basically or simply means forming a very stable ring structure. So when I have to talk about, say, for example, if I talk about this amino acid, we can see that both nitrogen and 
oxygen when they are going to form the coordinate bond with the metal in both the cases what we see is that this is resulting in the formation of a five sorry one two three four resulting in the formation of a four membered ring here that is called a chelate right and it gets its name from this particular structure that is also called a chelate so it is derived from the word chelation is derived from greek word meaning claw now when a bidentate or polydentate ligand is using two or more of its donor atoms to bind to a single metal ion as in this case then a ring structure will be obtained and that is called the chelate the ring structure is called chelate and whichever ligand is capable of forming a ring structure will be called a chelating ligand so if we take the example of hexadentate ligand that is edta so we can see here that edta is capable of forming a six membered ring here because here it will coordinate to a metal ion so here it will form a six membered ring here also it will form a six membered ring okay sorry 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 see the structure of metal edta complex is very very important and we will be taking up in further lectures so do not just you know because it is not represented in this form it is represented in a form that four oxygens and two nitrogens total forming six uh, donor atoms around and in between is going to be the metal ion or metal atom so that will form a complete structure metal edta structure is a completely different concept that we will be discussing very soon so let us see this last mcq ambidentate ligand contains two donor atoms correct contains two donor atoms both are involved in coordination no contains two donor atoms but only one of them forms a coordinate bond correct or it has only one donor atom so option c is the right answer so you have, since it is like one option is the correct option so you have to choose the most appropriate one so this is all about the classification of ligands i hope you've understood and i have told you what all is very very important from examination point of view so focus more on that and be thorough with it and you should be knowing the formula the structures and the names of the ligands as they are written in the complex because then only you will be able to understand the iupac nomenclature for coordination compounds you can subscribe to our youtube channel for joining youtube live classes for best neat or je coaching You can also download the first online university mobile app for continuous learning through your smartphones. Keep learning with First Online University, a team of millions of learners and educators worldwide.